Oh hi there, you just caught me doing some grip training. So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Today I'm going to be reading from my new book, Functional Training and Beyond, which is now available pretty much everywhere in the world, although stock is in short supply in some places. I think on Amazon, if you're in the UK, you might have to wait a couple of weeks for it to be delivered, but everybody else should have no problem. You can also buy it lots of other places like Smiths, like Waterstones, etc. So yeah, you can find it. I'll put some links in the description down below. The book is basically a discussion about functional training and why all of us, I think, could benefit from a more cross-modal approach to training that focuses not just on big lifts or just on cardio and losing weight, but rather on improving our performance in every different aspect that's available to us. And so it's a kind of discussion around that, a philosophy, as well as providing lots of hopefully actionable tips that you can apply to your own training. Today I'm going to be reading a section about fascia, muscle fascia. I mention it in so many videos it's become something of a running joke, but that's because fascia is fascinating. Fascinating, as I've already joked in the past, and it applies to almost everything. We don't know that much about it, it's this film wrap that surrounds the muscle and all the organs and just everything, and it has a lot more properties that we're discovering all the time which may or may not impact on our training. But anyways, get comfortable, make a cup of tea, and I'll read you a section from my book, and if you enjoy this, this is the kind of thing you can expect from the book, so check it out. The evolution of movement, barefoot training, the Tarahumara tribe, Movnat, cover a lot of different stuff in this book. Natural human mobility, the resting squat. Here we are, training the fascia. To me, the true aim of a fully functional compound training program should be to move the body as though it were one muscle. That means using every part of the body in unison towards one biomechanical goal. Well, guess what? This conceptualization may be more literally accurate than you previously imagined. While we have separate muscles, they are in fact contained by a single connective sheet called muscle fascia or myofascia. This is just one form of the fascia that is found throughout the entire body. If you have ever prepared a joint of meat and noticed that it's covered in a thin film, well, that right there is the fascia. This shrink wrap was disregarded by fitness and medical experts for hundreds of years, thought of as just some inert stuff. In fact, it was rarely seen at all, seeing as the fascia is largely made up of water and practically disappears when the body is dissected. That didn't fool da Vinci though, who actually included fascia in his anatomical sketches. An elastic sheet of connective tissue made from collagen, the role of fascia is to enclose and support muscles and organs within their cavities, along with the bones, cells, and practically everything else. It doesn't just fit around the outside of the body like a cat suit. It actually weaves in and out of and around muscles, organs, and cells, even morphing into distinct elements like tendons and aponeuroses. This viscous membrane network provides tension throughout the entire body that helps to keep everything in place. This property defines it as a tensegrity structure, which also applies to the body at large. Think about the way that a tent holds itself up by maintaining constant opposing tensions. This design may also allow the fascia to dissipate impacts and energy across the entire surface, thereby minimizing the damage caused by a fall or other impact. The flexibility of the fascia therefore contributes greatly to the flexibility of an individual as a whole with tightness in one area affecting far-flung parts of the body. But that's not all. The muscle fascia contains large amounts of elastin fibre to help provide elasticity and can actually supply additional energy rebound when running or jumping. But what is truly remarkable is that the muscle fascia contains blood vessels, smooth muscle cells and even sensory receptors. In fact, fascia may be equal or even superior to the retina in terms of sensory nerve receptor density. Much of this information, by the way, comes from Anatomy Trains by Tom Myers. It has between six to 10 times more nerve endings than muscle. In short, it seems that the fascia may play a key role in the expression of strength, along with improved balance and agility. One of the important ways this happens is via fascial force transmission. It appears that fascia facilitates communication between distant muscle groups, such that contracting one area encourages another to contract too. What's more, training seems to alter this force transmission. Fibroblast cells act like architects, traveling through the fascial system and producing the necessary collagen, collagenase, which breaks down collagen, and other chemicals to help build and reform the fascia. According to Tom Myers, this process allows the fascia to strengthen itself in response to specific areas of stress and pressure signals. In other words, the fascia can get stronger across specific lines to connect muscles that are often used in tandem. 
It is also thought that an additional function of the muscle fascia may be to act as a kind of communication system, helping electrical signals to spread between muscle groups and nerve endings. This could even go some way to explaining the irradiation effect, the fact that consciously contracting one muscle tends to result in the reactive tension of surrounding muscle, although that could also be due to the close proximity and interlinking between neural maps in the brain. The fascia might in fact be one of the oldest features of the human body, allowing us to move and evade predation even before we possess the nervous system. We're only just beginning to scratch the surface of the muscle fascia and what it is capable of. We simply don't know enough for me to provide practical advice on how to train the fascia, as it were, right now. Whatever the case, what everyone can agree on is that the fascia responds extremely well to training with a wide variety of different movements. The more you move, the more pliable and flexible the fascia will be and the less tension you'll carry and the greater control you'll have over the entire body. The fascia works best when hydrated, which keeps it spongy and resilient. Continually moving it in different directions seems to facilitate this suppleness, whereas a lack of movement may cause it to become rigid, dehydrated and stiff. Likewise, moving in multiple vectors, meaning directions, can potentially train and strengthen this tissue in angles that aren't described in the traditional muscle tendon unit model of human anatomy. We must train the entire system, not just individual muscles. The fascia is everywhere after all, and we can move in ways that our fixed muscle tendon units cannot. If you remain in a purely fixed movement pattern, like curling and squatting, then the surrounding fascia will be extremely underdeveloped compared to the fascia that sits right next to it. It's not a huge leap to suggest that this may lead to discomfort and limited strength development. In fascia training, a whole system approach, authors Bill Parisi and Jonathan Allen even suggest that fascia training may be partly responsible for the farmer strength that we've encountered previously. Farmers are strong from labor work because they have strengthened the connective tissue at angles that are otherwise ignored through submaximal loads and with non-repetitive movements. Likewise, the fascia will thank you for performing each pull-up differently. Movement training that takes you through countless unpredictable movement patterns is ideal for fascia training. If research into fascia continues down this promising path, it is very likely to offer increasing support for these less rigid forms of training. Finally, the fascia shows us just once again how truly remarkable and adaptable the human body really is. Training with specific movements may do more than just build the necessary muscles. It may actually strengthen the tissue between those muscles and help them to work better together. As Tom Myers puts it, the body responds to demand. Moving, moving stuff. So yeah, if you enjoyed that guys, and you'll definitely enjoy this book, I discuss everything from fascia, to movement training, to calisthenics, to parkour, to martial arts, to old time strongmen, powerlifting, bodybuilding, the golden era of bodybuilding. I talk about brain training, cognitive training, anything that can offer some kind of functional benefit and that is so often missing or overlooked in our training. If you want a training program based around these concepts with a breakdown of different exercises, etc., and even more information, then you can also find my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training, in the description down below. And there's a discount on that right now, while so many people are stuck in lockdown due to the pandemic. That being why my hair looks like this. So if you found this video useful, interesting guys, if you did then please leave a like and share it around. Something a bit different today, but I'll be back to the usual programming next week. I've got some cool stuff on the way, including a Goku workout, parkour training, why everybody should run, ambidexterity training. So if that all sounds good, then stay tuned. Please subscribe, hit the bell button for notifications, and thanks so much for all your support. Thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.